All right, let's take a look. Uh, all right. Nico. Cooldown. Nico no longer inherits base attacks moves from this guy's target. The stats higher than hers. Cooldown, two seconds. No longer breaks on taking damage, only when the sky self would have died or when you are crowd controlled. This is very interesting, right? This this is what allows Nico to have some sub potential. Second, the Q damage is nerfed, but it deals bonus damage to monsters. Casting Q beyond its maximum range now cast ability at maximum range since having Nico walk into position to throw it. I don't like these things. I don't like these these type of changes uh, because it's like you get used to something, right? When Nico is near a non-epic monster minion trap ward or plant for two seconds, she stores their Shuma. Nico can click on the hair bar to become that unit. The click on Nico's face to return to Nico. Click on the little X to clear out Nico's current Shuma. Only one unit can be stored at a time. Okay. Alright, that's interesting. Like, can I turn into a wolf, like, in the middle of the lane? <laughs> can I do that shit? Or do I have to be in the vicinity of where a wolf is? I'm assuming I can do it to whatever the fuck I want. The potential to dab on enemies is crazy here. Really, really something else. I wonder how this works with the context of, let's say I turn into the, a, um, let's say I turn into a monster, right? If, if I turn into a monster and that monster has a higher, a bigger HP bar than me, then will Nico die before the transformation dies? I'm assuming yes, right? Like let's say I have 2k HP, I'm Nico. I turn into a golem and the golem has 4k HP. My theoretical HP should still be 2k and that should be the benchmark for me to die, right? There's no way, like, I can turn into Gromp and just be, like, be really tanky in a fight and just wait. There's no way, like, that's gonna be the case. You have resists? Because that part is very interesting. After casting Nico can reactivate to send the clone to a new location. Ooh, that is very nice. Clone now plays animations and sounds of QE and survives for their duration. Oh, that's very cool. Okay. Empowered attacks deal 50 bonus damage to monsters. They really want Nico Jungle to work. Because these buffs that improve her jungling are also good for lane right so let's say i'm playing nico and i have the ability to let's say maybe kill raptors um very hard with the new jungle because uh, the jungle camps are very tanky but the, these type of things are slight buffs for for lane nico too nico's clone spawns one of the units in front of her this is very big as well this is very nice this is very good quality of life changes i like this uh tango barbs they just reduced her damage with higher AP scaling. After channeling for 1.25 seconds, Nico jumps into the air, knocking up all nearby enemies for 0 0.6 seconds. Nico then caches to the ground with all knocked up enemies, dealing magic damage and stunning them for 0 0.75 seconds. Oh, okay. This is a really, really good change. Really, really good change. Anytime you transform a CC to a knockup, it is very, very good. Cooldown is increased, that's fucking rough. Damage is decreased, that is a little bit fucking rough. Nigu no longer gains a shield when channeling her R, okay. You know, the key thing here is that the CC starts when she jumps up in the air, right? So the counterplay is going to be less, because currently on patch, right? Well, the original Nico is that she jumped in the air and you could still flash out and react. Now you won't be able to react, which is a very, very big change. This is very, very big. Uh, very big for the quality life of Nico. But in my mind, looking at this kit, I feel like this is a champion that will be will be benefited being in the jungle or being in the super role. Because currently with these AP scalings and the damage of Q, I don't feel like it's attractive enough to be considered a uh, solo laner in terms of what value you get from the gold that you can generate, right? That's like my first take. Uh, Mephisto also wrote in the chat, Nico clears jungle in... Uh, in 306 by the way that is crazy fast that is really really crazy fast i guess you do like q start do raptors into w and then you do red and then you like just clear your full jungle that sounds uh spicy very spicy it would be funny right it's like imagine you full clear and then you walk on top wave and then it's like the enemy needs to crash the wave and then you like just lane gank by being a minion that's that sounds really fucking good like, you lane gank, but then it's like the enemy, of course, needs to spot the fact that there's fucking seven minions in the wave, right? But uh, I can see some potential for that, you know? There's going to be some good highlight moments, and I, I like this type of thing in the game. I, I really like these type of changes because anything that forces you to think, and within that thought process, you can find clear counterplay. I think those type of mechanics are really, really fucking good to have in the game, you know? Where there's a, an active challenge for both players to outsmart the other. And not like 
just a stat check or like a Yumi where there's no clear counterplay. It's like you have to just kill or whatever, you know? Pass damage increased, arm movement speed increased. Uh, this is... Okay. Bonus move speed. Okay. Okay. I think a big thing for Aatrox, right, is that, for example, the changes to Death Dance in the previous patch is very beneficial. Uh, these are the changes that are more important. I feel like right now a lot is driven based off of itemization and how you can get away with itemization. I think Aatrox is a champion that maybe you could be playing into like Gragas top, maybe even Gragas mid. I think the itemization completely gutted Aatrox and he was balanced around the itemization first and then the itemization changed and I think this was the hardest part, right? I think that's that's the biggest failure of the mythic item system and sometimes in other systems too in regards to items it's like an item gets buffed then there's like abusers that are clearly ahead of the curve uh, in terms of performance in that item class and then they nerf those overperformers and then they nerf the item too and then these champions are just ending up being garbage right i'm almost good okay uh, flat magic damage per second 20 to all ranks wow I feel like Riot really can't decide what the fuck they want to do with this champion. But but this having 8 seconds up on level 1 is really, really big. This is massive. Like, this is really, really big uh, at the first hand glance. Like, in terms of the damage you can do in an all-in, like, th this is a big difference in terms of damage that you can make. And you also have to keep in mind Amumu's passive and so forth, so... It's like the efficiency of magic resistance against Amumu is worse and so forth. Like, this is a monster buff. Keep in mind, this is the spell that you max last in most cases, right? So, I think this is really, really big. Really big. It's like having more damage on rank 1, 8 per second, is crazy high. It's insanely high. It's like borderline, like my brain is telling me to play like a Mumu top uh, with shit like this. Attack damage growth, monster damage modification. Okay. I think Belvet is strong, uh, but I think... I, I, I have to admit this, like this type of a change on, on face value, I can't really like interpret it, but it just looks like a like a percentage down nerf, you know? Attack damage growth decreased. That is crazy. They really do. It's, it's like they're preparing for uh, Arcane Season 2 or what? <laughs> this, is, this is nuts. I feel like the quality of life changes that Jinx got were really, really big for her, you know? It's like the W change, the E change. These are really, really powerful uh, things and tools that uh, disable a lot of the counterplay. Uh, against um, the situation, you know? Alright, E AP on it AP ratio decreased E passive wave damage Wow, okay Well, this this might incentivize you to do different orders of maxing abilities on Kale. Uh, I'm gonna be kind of curious to monitor this and see how this is going to play out because like if you can do like Q max again maybe there's some room for some action Cast time down to 0 0.5 seconds. I feel like this is very clunky. I feel like the cast time shouldn't be there. They should balance the ability around having no cast time. I think that would be more nice. Um, Kale no longer lowers the range when casting ult on herself. Like, like it's it's so weird because they wanted they wanted to amplify this ability for the purpose of it having like this fucking damage come down on you. But I feel like it's just as clunky as, like, let's say, the the Nikul, you know, as it used to be. And I think that those type of interactions in the game where the counterplay is just flash, I am not a big fan, you know? 2.5 each rank, I think this is pretty big. Uh, already when you reach rank 3 ultimate, you're already very rewarded for being Kale in the game. So anything that helps you... Uh, be stronger early is, is very positive. Uh, magic damage, bonus AD, and then 70% AP, AP scaling down and flat damage down. Okay. And the if area of effect radius is bigger as well. Okay. Okay. Well, these are pretty damn good buffs, I have to say, for Kale. This is pretty fucking good. Uh, passive health decay increased. Jesus. Okay. This is, this is rough, yeah? It's, it just comes down to the same thing as before, right? It's like... They added new tank items. Cyan was not performing well because people didn't figure out how to build him. And then they figured out how to build him. And then all of these buffs, the quality of life buffs that Cyan got were, were, became really big for the game. It's like, he got mana up, right? Which allowed him to buy different items. And then it just enables something, you know? Uh, this is a, a really big deal. This means you can attack while immune for 2 seconds kill, right? Yes, yes. Swain, Q damage increased. 
So that's just 2% AP scaling, and then this is per bolt, or like 2% bonus damage per bolt. Maximum damage. Oh, th this is this is decent. This is decent. I think this is decent. The issue is it's it's hard to find spots where Swain can be played. The issue with, with Swain is that itemization, there's too many items that are important on Swain. That's my biggest problem with Swain. It's like, you want Road of Ages, you want Rylize, you want... You want tier, you want, uh, you know, you want all that good stuff. And it's so hard to choose which direction you want to go into. Kind of reminds me of old Volibear top where you wanted everything. You wanted Nash's Tooth, you wanted Trinity Force, you wanted to be tanky. And every time you go in one direction, you're lacking the other, you know? I think that maybe you could play Swain into the likes of like Nautilus. Maybe you could play Swain into Nautilus as an example. But then again, I feel like Nautilus's advantage is that he can just choose his fights very easily, you know? And uh, Swain is too immobile for the modern game of League of Legends. Isn't it good to want everything? No, it's like you you will then lack uh, specific things, you know? You, you go in one direction and then you lock, lack the other direction. It's not about having options, it's just that you need everything. Talia... Th deals damage whenever it th takes damage. Oh, this is a pretty fucking big buff. I like this type of buff, but not good enough to make me excited about Talia. Trundle attack speed 0 0.6067. This is fucking big, by the way. This is a massive buff. This is really, really big because he is amplified a lot harder based over the attack speed of W, right? So this is a monster buff. I think Trundle is already strong, and I think this is going to make him insane. W healing, uh, physical damage, 6% bonus health. Okay, 1% bonus health. This doesn't make me super excited. I think Volibear is fine, considering his bonus health of ult. I think this is okay, you know? This is this is okay. I think Volibear deserves some, some love. 10 AP buff. I think this is massive for all the champions that buy it. Fizz, Echo, super, super fucking happy. But all, all, all in all here together, guys, uh, I think this patch is a non-patch. It's a non-patch. We're waiting for 3.10. Uh, it is what it is. We, we covered it all. Uh, Nico is, is... This is the patch for Nico. Uh, I'm going to be spamming this. I think this has potential to be a lot of fun. But it depends on how fluent a lot of the things are going to go, right?